church, praise God, and they, you know, they will. They're willing to invest. That's what God's looking for. He don't want the one with the most talent. You know, sometimes he's going to have a hard time with them anyhow because they got pride in their heart. And he's gonna have to, he wants the one that's willing to go, praise God, at any given time. Amen. Praise the Lord. And they, they are. They're willing to be used. Hallelujah. Turner saw somebody drop their food the other day. <laughs> and I felt bad because we were in such a hurry or whatever. And by the time I looked over there, he done had it picked up. But he turned around and he said, Daddy, I'm going to go help that man. And I said, well, praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. If they just want to be used. I, I remember my mama, she, she likes listening to old Jimmy Swaggart in the morning. She, she knows where her heart needs to be, whether she's here or not. Glory to God. Amen. But they started singing that song, I Can't Even Walk Without You Holding My Hand. And he got up off the couch, just two years old, and was raising his hand like that. And the conviction of the Holy Ghost hit him. Amen. Praise the Lord. So don't say they can't be used. Amen. Because I've been seen them do it. Glory to God. Amen. If you got some Bibles, turn to the book of James in the second chapter. We're going to begin reading in verse 14 this morning for the reading of God's Word. James chapter 2. Amen. Verse 14. Say amen when we get to it. Amen. James chapter 2, toward the end of your Bible. Philemon or Philemon, whichever way you want to say it, Hebrews and James. <laughs> we had that discussion Tuesday night. Some was with Philemon, and I, I've always said Philemon, so I may get to heaven and be wrong about it, but I don't believe it's going to be too much to worry about when we get there. Amen. I apologize to him when I see him. <laughs> I'm going to tell you some of them names in the Old Testament. I'm going to have to apologize to a lot of them this day. <laughs> Glory to God. James chapter 2, verse 14. Can't stand for the reading of God's word this morning. Reverence to him. Praise the Lord. The Bible says, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, and be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith. By my works. Thou believest that there is one God, and thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble, but without but will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. Was not Abraham Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son up to upon the altar? Seest thou hath faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God and was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also not Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers, and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Hallelujah, Jesus. Pray with us this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your many blessings, Lord God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we can come here, and Lord God, and we have the opportunity to worship you this morning, hear your word, and feel your presence, Lord God. I pray, Lord Jesus, today that you would till up each and every soul, Lord God, represented under the sound of my voice, that the seed, which is the word of God, would fall on good ground and bring forth much fruit, Lord Jesus, that we retain the word of God and take it outside of these four walls and apply it to our lives, Lord God. I pray that you'd anoint these old lips of clay, knowing I'm nothing outside of you, and I need the unction of the Holy Ghost. 
to deliver the message you've laid on my heart. Don't let me say anything outside of your will. And we bind up the spirit of hell that may come against this service in Jesus' name. And ask you to lose encouragement, Lord God, and strength in the house of God. And do what only you can do in the altars. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Praise God. I want to preach to you this morning on a faith that works. Amen. A faith that works. Praise God. And I want to really come out of verse 17 and 18 this morning in our text that we've read. The Bible says, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man say, thou hast faith and have works. I show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. Praise God. You know, at first, uh, before we ever get started in dealing with the, the later part of this scripture, I want to talk to you about a dead faith. Amen. A dead faith. Let's deal with that dead faith first. We live in a world today that people don't think that Christians should have to pray. Come on, somebody. They don't think that, that they should read their Bible. They don't even think that they have to go to church to be a Christian. Amen. And I'm not saying that going to church is going to save you. Amen. But we all know that when you get saved, you want to attend church. Come on now. Here you this morning. And, and we, we live in a world that thinks that you don't have to read the Word. You don't have to obey God or any of these things to call yourself a Christian. All that you have to do is believe that Jesus exists. And the world calls themselves Christians. Amen. But I want to tell you this morning that that's a dead faith. Amen. If, if you don't have any kind of action that follows your faith, James tells us in our passage of Scripture that that's a dead faith. Amen. And you know, if I got a, a car with a set of tires on it, I have to have faith in those tires to know that they are able to do what they're designed to do. Can you say amen? If I don't and I just believe that they're just tires and I don't have faith in those tires to do what they're designed to do and get me to where I need to go, then I have a dead faith in those tires. Can you say amen? I know that that's a pew right there. I know that it's designed uh, for somebody to sit down in it, but I bet if I just have faith, that it's a wooden pew and I don't have faith that I can walk over there and sit down in it, then I have a dead faith. Can you say amen to me this morning? Dead faith will have no action. It will have no proof that it's there. Amen. And if you say that you have faith and you don't have any kind of works to follow it up in Christ Jesus, then your faith is dead alone. Can you say amen? So if, 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 if faith in Christ shows no works, then it's a dead faith. Amen. Amen. It's a dead faith. Praise God. Amen. In verse 18, James kind of clears it up for us. And he says, Yea, a man say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without works. Amen. It's not possible is what he's saying. You can't show me faith without some kind of works. I heard a man preach one time, and he brought it to a, a small scale. And when he wakes up in the morning, he said, if you say that you have no faith and no works that backs up your faith, then you won't even be able to eat a bowl of cereal because you don't have faith to know that they cleaned the milk the way they were supposed to, that they made the cereal the way it was supposed to be made, that it will not poison your body when you eat. So you have to have faith and back up uh, uh, a live faith, not a dead faith, to open that box of cereal, to open that milk and pour it in a bowl and eat it. If not, you have a dead faith. Amen. But James says that our faith will be shown by the works that follow it. Amen. He said, I will show thee my faith by my works. Can somebody say amen? It's the most ignorant thing to say, amen, that you can earn your salvation by works. That's the most ignorant thing to say, and that's not what James is saying. He's saying your faith will be recognized by the works that follow your faith, amen. Ephesians 2 and 8 and 9 tells us that for by grace are you saved through faith, amen. Through faith and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, 
not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. So it would be ignorant for me to think that the works that I do on this earth is going to get me to heaven. Because the Bible says that on our best day, where we do everything right, where we make a hundred, and everything that we're supposed to do is of filthy rags compared to the holiness of of God. Can you say amen? So our best works will never be able to get us to heaven. Amen. And our best works will never get us there. It took the works of Christ at Calvary that could pay such a debt that had to be paid. Amen. I could go and try to shed my blood on the cross and if you put your faith in my blood, you're going to bust hell wide open. Come on somebody. Because I'm not, uh, it had to be the supreme sacrifice it had to be Jesus Himself stepping down from the throne in heaven and coming down and dwelling with us for 33 years and living a sinless life in order for Him to go to the cross and pay the debt that needed to be paid. So for us to think that we could pay such a debt, debt is ludicrous. It's crazy. Amen. To know, to, to think that. Amen. And James is not saying that works will produce faith. That's not what he's saying. And I know that some people want to throw it around. You can't work for your salvation. You're exactly right. And that's not what James is saying, that your works will produce faith. He's saying that your faith will produce works. Amen. He's not saying that you can earn your salvation or you can work for your salvation. He's saying because you are saved, the works that will follow will be a faith that works. Amen. It's Him inside of us that produces a faith that works. Amen. And the th fact of the matter is, if there is no works that follow your faith, that you have a dead faith and you need to get back in the altar and pray, if the works of Christ is not following your faith, amen, you have to have a faith that works. Glory to God. And, and Jesus teaches us this in, in the book of John. In the 15th chapter, amen. If you want to turn there with me, John chapter 15, I'm going to begin reading in verse 1. This is Jesus talking to us, amen, not just the disciples in. I feel like when we read the Bible, we need to we need to look at it as Jesus or God talking directly to us, amen. And he said, I am the true vine. And my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it, it abide in the vine, and no more can ye expect ye abide in me. I am the vine, and you the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bring forth fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and withered, and men, and men gather them, and cast them into a fire, and they are burned, praise the Lord. He says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear fruit, bear much fruit, so ye shall be my disciples. Amen. If our faith abides in Him, then the works of our life will be evidence of what our faith is in. Can you say amen? If we abide in Him and our faith be in Him, then the works that's evident in our life will resemble Christ. Can you hear me this morning? I'm talking about a faith that works. Praise God. You will never see an apple tree bearing orange. You ain't going to see it. You can travel around the world and you can look all you want to, but you ain't never going to see an apple on an orange tree. And you ain't never going to see an orange on an apple tree. Come on, somebody. Amen. It's just not going to happen, praise the Lord. And you will never see a child of God producing fruit that's not of Him. Can you say amen? Brother Larry, tell you quick, there ain't no such thing is bad fruit. It's called the lust of the flesh. Amen. Come on, somebody. I remember I preached a message probably, well, you know, a few years ago about, about what your fruit looked like. And I remember going up to Mama's house. She had that old pear tree out by the pump shed. Amen. And sometimes you get up there and you find one and it'd be just right. 
glory to God. And you can eat that thing, amen. But sometimes you walk up and that thing has hair all hanging off of it, mold, amen, bugs flying all around it, glory to God. And I'm going to tell you right now, that looks like the works that the world produces, amen, when it starts looking like that. But you'll never see a child of God producing works that's not of Him because the faith that we have in Him is a faith that produces the works of Him. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm not saying you're not going to make a mistake. And I'm not saying that you're not going to have a bad day, glory to God, because every one of us are capable of doing such things. What I am saying is what I'm saying that if you willingly wake up and want to live in sin, something is wrong, glory to God. Something is wrong if you can wake up and continue in a relationship that you know that you're not supposed to be in. Something is definitely wrong if you can wake up and tell a lie without even thinking twice. Of, Come on, somebody. Something is definitely wrong if you can walk out the door and just live just like the world and it not bother you. Amen. If you find yourself willingly living in sin and it not bothering you, I'm going to tell you right now, you better check your root system because you ain't wrapped up in the vine that he's talking about today. If you're wrapped up in the vine and Jesus being the vine, glory to God, and that be your root system, then you will have a faith that works. Come on, somebody. You'll have a faith that works, that wants to do these things. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. We go back to the book of James in the uh, 21st verse uh, that I read to you. The Bible talks about a time that happened in the Old Testament. It said, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son up to the altar? Seest thou had faith wrought with his works? And by works was faith made perfect. And he goes on to say, And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, And Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then how the works of a man is justified and not by faith only. Amen. We know the story of Abraham and Sarah. They prayed for years. And God had promised them a child, amen, long before they got it. And I, you know, we were reading the scripture to where the Bible says that God uh, uh, gave them a child and Abraham was a hundred years old. Sarah was nine. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but Lord, please help me. Ah. I'm barely going to be able to take care of myself if the Lord lets me live that long, much less a little bit. Come on, somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking about, amen? But here he is, 100 years old, and her being 90, something that today we think would be impossible, and now here it is, glory to God. I mean, he made them wait for it, no doubt, amen? And then here they have this child, amen, that's born that was promised to be the seed, which would be God's people, because Isaac is Jacob's father, and Jacob will become Israel, which Israel would become God's chosen people, amen? Amen. And this was the promise that was given to Abraham uh, and Sarah, praise the Lord. And, and they would wait for it. And finally here would come. And all of a sudden God says, I want you to take the son that I just give you. And I want you to take him to the top of that mountain where that altar is. And I want you to lay him on that altar. And I want you to sacrifice him for me. I'm pretty sure Abraham at that time was sitting there scratching his head thinking, what in the world, Lord? Here I am. I've been waiting a hundred years for this promise that you give me. Amen. And now all of a sudden it's here and you want me to carry him all the way up. Come on, somebody. And you want me to carry him all the way up to the top of that mountain. Amen. And sacrifice him. Amen. He ain't had no youngins by this point in time. He's still a boy. Amen. And you said that he would be uh, the, the seed of the children of Israel. Amen. He said it would be multiplied as sand on the seashore. Glory to God. Amen. He said, so I imagine that he, and this is just me thinking, amen. I imagine he's a little bit confused now knowing that he's just going to go up there and he's going to sacrifice his son. 
come. But I want to tell you this morning that it did not stop him one bit from doing what God had told him to do. Because he told that boy, let's go to the top of that mountain, amen. And when they got there, Isaac looked back at his daddy and said, where's the sacrifice, amen. And they kept on going. And the faith that Abraham had in I, the faith that Abraham had in God and him could, uh, knowing that his promise would come through, amen, kept him going up that mountain every step and everywhere, every step that he took, knowing that God was going to come through. And the Bible said when they got to the top of that mountain, there was a ram amen. caught in the bush. Amen. Yeah. Glory to God. Even when he didn't understand it. This is what gets me about him. Even when he didn't understand it, he still obeyed God because he had a faith that works. Even when he didn't understand it, amen, and I think that could preach to me off. Oh, even when I don't understand what God is doing, even when I don't understand why God says no, I need to keep on going forward if I have a faith that works. Come on, somebody. Hear me this morning. But he took his son all the way up there. They got up there and they had the sacrifice waiting on him. And the works that he showed showed that he had a faith that works. Glory to God. He had such a, he did, he was surrendered completely to God that he did not even understand why. And that shows that his faith produced the works. Of him walking up to that mountain. Same thing with the, uh, with the harlot that Rahab. Amen. We'll have to go back and read that. Uh, the, the twelve spies, the spies went over there and, and two said that they could and they, they come back and, and they had, they were, they were, they had some people chasing them and I, I'm just putting in my words right now just trying to run through it. And they get to Rahab's house and, and, and I believe it was Joshua who made me wrong. I have to go back and read it. But he said that, 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 that if you hide us here, that we'll make sure that you and your family will go into the promised land with us, glory to God. And the faith that she had in God produced works that she hid those people there, glory to God. Amen. And it just goes to show you that if you have faith in God, it's going to produce the works of God. Amen. In both of those situations. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. I'm trying to tell you this morning that if you have faith in God, your works is going to line up with it. You're not going to do, a man told me a long time ago, he said, you can't do enough to be saved because it's already been done. But when you come down to the altar and really get born again by the Spirit of God, there's going to be a change. There's going to be a change, amen, in your faith that you have in His ability. Come on, somebody. I mean, I preach it all the time. I went over it today that we can't just believe that He exists and expect that, uh, that we're going to be saved. We have to believe in the supernatural power and authority that Jesus is Lord over my life. Glory to God. And I'm willing to go where He's going to take me. I'm willing to step out in faith when He wants me to. Glory to God. I'm willing to do these things and when we get to that place in our life, we'll have faith that works. Amen. We'll have a faith that's going to show the works of God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. He says in, in, in 1 John, the Bible says that we will keep His commandments and they won't be grievous. Hey man, if you're walking around trying to uh, do everything God says and it's like pulling teeth, the chances are your foundation isn't right and you need to get back in this altar until it's not grievous to you because when a child of God gets saved, they just want to please Him. It doesn't matter how hard it's going to get. It ain't easy. And I didn't say it's going to be easy, but you want to do it. Amen. You want to do it because it pleases the Father in heaven, amen, it's not grievous, but if it ever comes to where it's pulling teeth every time God asks you to do something, amen, chances are you need to get back in the altar and pray, and not only pray, but pray through, pray till something happens, that's where we get 
mixed up with things. You know, because some preacher told us we could come down here and we could mumble a few words and then we could do that. We need to stay in this altar until we pray through, until the change happens. Glory to God. Amen. And then we'll have a faith that works. Amen. You'll do it because you want to do it. Amen. You'll do it because it pleases the Father. Amen. There was a lady, amen, that, that, that came to, to the altar time and time and time again that would never surrender to God. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. If you don't fully surrender to God, the works of God will drive a wedge right in between you and Him and push you right out the door. Come on now. When it's religion, it's work. But when it's a relationship, it comes easy. Amen. The Bible says that his yoke, that his, yoke his burden is, e is light. It's easy, praise God. But when, when you're just trying to do it to get your youngins back, when you're just trying to do it to have a better life, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to continue to try to do the works of God, continue to try to do what God's asking you to do, and before long it's going to drive a wedge between you and God and send you right back out that door, amen, to live in the world. But I want to tell you today, I have seen people fully surrender to God and have a faith that works that took them from prison all the way behind the pulpit, amen, because the, the commandments of God were not grievous. They wanted to do it going to God, amen, because it pleased the Father, amen, it pleased them to please the Father. I know a man right now that was in prison five years ago. Six, seven years, I saw it seven years ago. He come up to refuge or to the uh, bridge and preached with me a little bit. He was raised in a home by crackheads. Come on, somebody. He was raised in a home by drug addicts. He told me one time, he said they would leave my little brother there and he wouldn't have a diaper to even change him into. He said I'd have to take the towels that we had and wrap around his body. And when he messed one of them towels up, I'd have to go put it in the washing machine. And I'd have to go over there. wouldn't even leave food for their children to eat. And that's what he was raised in. And if anybody else, I don't tell you, a lot of people they raised with bitterness and hate in their hearts. And no doubt he had some in his heart. Amen. Until he came to the altar and got born again by the Spirit of God. And God gave him a faith that works. Amen. He got out of prison. He started doing the work that the Lord wanted him to. He pastors Chickasaw First Baptist now. I'm telling you right now, when you fully surrender to God, He'll give you a faith that works that will take you to places that you can't even imagine. But you got to have a faith that works. Because if you're working to have faith, it's going to drive a wedge and you're going to rebel and you're going to continue to do what you want to do. Amen. But when you have a faith that works, praise God, you're going to start seeing the evidence of it. Stand with me all over God's house. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your many blessings. Lord, I pray today, Lord God, that if there's anybody under the sound of my voice through the internet, wherever it may be, if they're doing it, but if they're, they're, if they're trying to work to produce faith, Lord God, that you get a hold to their heart today until they have a faith that works, Lord God. I pray today that today would be the day of salvation for them. That they would pray through, Lord God, and do the works that you would have them to do. That they would have a desire in their heart to want to do what you want them to do and nothing else. To have a desire to forsake this world and follow you, glory to God. Jesus, we thank you so much for the salvation that you paid for. I pray, Lord God, that it don't go in vain in not one person's life. Lord, your word says that we're called, called to repentance. And I pray today that today would be that day for somebody in this house or outside, Lord God, through the end, wherever they may be. I pray that you get a hold to their heart.